In this video, we are going to learn a small trick that allows us to save some time when using Swagger and JWT. Let's see an example. Let's see that here we have Swagger and here we have this endpoint which is protected as we can see here with this lock. If I click on here, try it out, execute. If I don't send a JWT to authenticate myself, then I'll get back a 401 unauthorized. That is normal. So. Let's come here, let me register, try it out. I'll say Felipe, and then I will put a password like this one. Then I will click on execute, and I will get back this JWT, this JSON web token. Let me copy this. I will put it into a notepad file like this one, so I can have it for later. So. Now, if I come here, of course, if I come here to execute, we're still going to get back a 401 because I am not sending that JWT. For that, I have to come here and I have to paste this authorized close and then now this lock is closed and therefore I can say execute and now we have back a 200 OK, which means that our request was successful. That is great, but if I come here, for example, and I refresh my page, you are going to see that now the lock is open and therefore, if I try to come here, try it out, execute, then we're back at square one because we have a 401. That is not great, it is not the end of the world. Of course, I can come here, I can copy this and I can put it back here and then I will have everything set up and then I can redo my request. Now, again, this is, a small annoyance. This is something that I don't like because it makes me waste time and therefore we're going to find a solution for it. But before that, if you want to learn more about how to build web APIs using minimal APIs, buy my Udemy courses today. I have a course that uses minimal APIs with Entity Framework Core and I have another course that uses minimal APIs but with Dapper. In that one, we use store procedures. Link to these courses in the description of this video with a discount included. Alright, so back to the tutorial. As I was saying, I don't like that if I refresh here, we lose the information of the JWT, but actually that is very easy to fix. We only need to do one line of code. Let's come to Visual Studio and let's see how to fix this. Let's come down here. We are here in the program class and here we have use Swagger UI. And in this use Swagger UI, I can do the following. I can say options, enable persist authorization. And believe it or not, with this, we are done. With this, we did a trick. Let me save, let me press Ctrl F5, and as its name implies, enable persist authorization is going to persist the authorization data of the JWT, and therefore, we're going to be able to reuse it even if we refresh the browser. Let's see that. Let's come here, and let's see that now. I haven't touched anything, and I have this lock closed here, which means that indeed, we're going to be able to send the JWT. I can refresh, and you can see that this is still closed, and therefore, if I come here, try it out, execute, we are going to see that we have back a 200 OK. So with this small trick, I don't have to be always having to put the JWT in the authorized because it will be automatically done for us. Thank you.